All right, it's your girl, Sandra D. The main event. And welcome to my channel. And welcome to my community of love and unity. We will not be talking about hair. And we will not be talking about food. We are on the journey of talking about the narcissist. And if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Now, today I am actually wearing the main event. This is one of my hoodies. I will make sure that I put the description into how you can obtain and get one um, because it says for love is in the hair. Now, this one right here is my older one and I am waiting um, to get my new one because I love my, my hoodies and, you know, I like to, you know, rock it out. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure that I let you guys know that you guys can get one if you like, because um, sharing is caring. All right. Now, today's topic, we're going to be talking about why you didn't need closure from the narcissistic relationship, but what you did need was confirmation. Now, when you're in a relationship, whatever type of relationship that it is with a narcissist, it could be um, a friend. It could be a lover, could be your husband, wife, could be a co-worker, business partner, um, things in that nature. When you're in a relationship with the narcissist, you know, the narcissist wants to make you feel as comfortable as possible as a way of gaining your trust. And also a very good listener as a way of taking notes on how they can further manipulate you um, because they already passed the first barrier when they gave you a sample by mirroring you and mimicking you by mirroring you and showing you yourself and your wonderful attributes and the wonderful precious jewel that you are and the narcissist knew that and they knew that in order for them to gain access to you, they were going to have to copy who you are as an individual because they wanted you to like them and not actually see them as the predators that they are. So they copied you, you know, like how some of these people will come out and you have a Gucci bag and, you know, you pay all this money for this bag, but then they have the knockoffs. So the narcissist, when they came into your life, they were a knockoff version of who you are. And what they just did was just copied who you were as an individual. And that is how they were able to get through the first barrier by giving you a sample of who you are. So when you thought that you had this connection with this individual, what you really were connecting with was yourself. Okay. And so the narcissist gave you a sample of who you are and you liked it and you were supposed to because you like you. OK, you know, you valuable, you know, you the she naive. OK, and the narcissist knew that, too. So in order for the narcissist to continue to try to run game on you, they have to get information from you. And I like to call this the interviewing stage okay and what they're doing is gathering information by asking you a ton of questions okay and you're not seeing any harm in this because when you're talking to people what do you do you have conversations to get to know one another right so the narcissist already knew that they they wanted to get to know you okay getting to know you getting to know all about you okay they knew they knew that they wanted to get to know you because they wanted to know how they were going to run their manipulation on you and how they were going to actually be able to get to that second barrier okay so they interviewed you so when they interviewed you you thought that they were good listeners you're like wow this person is a really good listener and yeah but it wasn't for the reasons why you thought it wasn't because they were really trying to <clears throat> get to know you in a sense to where you guys were going to do amazing things. They were getting to know you because they wanted to make sure that they could have access to all of your 
goodies, all of your goodness. They were trying to get to the core of who you are to figure out what makes you function, what makes you work. Okay. And so they were taking notes. Okay. And then once they had the notes that they needed, as you guys were having this conversation, key keying it up, you spilling the tea, sipping on it with the narcissist, not knowing that they're a narcissist. Cause if you knew that, if that, that they were a narcissist, you wouldn't even entertain them for one. And two, you wouldn't be on this channel trying to get information about the narcissist. Okay. We've all been there. We all have been there that have experienced, uh, this horrible individual and person who pretends, okay, to like you or care about you or wants to be your friend or business partner or coworker, you know, but what they're really doing is trying to see how they can manipulate you, how they can deceive you and how they can break you down. Because in the end, they, what they really want to do is be you, but they could never feel your shoes. Just like you cannot feel the shoes of a narcissist. Okay, let's continue. So the narcissist made sure that they scripted this character that they knew that they were going to play. Okay. And they needed to audition to make sure that you would choose them as their leading lady or their leading man. Okay. Doesn't matter if it was romantically or not. Okay. They needed to audition to be able to move to the next barrier. And they made sure that when they did the audition, that they were very convincing because they needed to convince you that everything that you said to them that they heard, but it was with ill intentions. So the narcissist did love bomb you and, you know, just telling you things that you wanted to hear, but you didn't want to hear a lie. You wanted to hear a truth, but they used it as an opportunity to be able to tap in so that they can move to the next barrier underhandedly and slickly without you recognizing and realizing that you are allowing an enemy into your camp, to your camp. Okay. And what winds up happening is that the narcissist is really trying to get you to allow them access in and they want you to trust them. Okay. They want you to trust them with everything and they will do everything that they can in that role as a way of trying to provide proof, if you will. You know, like when you go um, into court and you need to prove your case and you need certain things to be able to bring that will show, you know, that what you're saying is credible. And that's what they did. But they used it based off of your information that you gave to them as a way of proving it. It's not that they actually did the actual homework and the actual work and brought themselves to the table. No, they just scripted a character that they knew um, that they were going to kill off. You know, like when you watch in your favorite movie and or series and you like, man, I really like this character, but they, they um, kill a character off. Well, that character is exactly what the narcissist did because the narcissist never wanted to continue to be that character. They just wanted just enough work to put in, okay, to get you to trust them so that all hell was going to break loose when they was finished playing this role, okay? So when the narcissist was doing all of these things, you were none the wiser that the narcissist was doing this. And it was designed that way. This is how slick, okay, 
that narcissists are. They sly. Just like how the devil has sat there and deceived Eve in the garden. You see, when the devil had deceived Eve, he had said some things to Eve to make her have reasonable doubt, to make her feel as though she was missing out on something or that God was withholding something from her and he wasn't. But God did not want them to partake of this fruit because he did not want them to experience, okay, some of the horrific things that you would know that you don't need to know that can mess with your mental. And this is what the narcissist did to you. This is what the narcissist did to me. This is what the narcissist has done to the people in this community. Okay. They are wanting to reprogram you and they want to groom you. Okay. They don't want you to be who God created you to be because they want to create you into what they want you to be. Just like the, the enemy when he deceived Eve and Adam in the garden. Because once they partook of that fruit, okay, that's when you had the good and the evil. And God knew that they had did something wrong because when he went to go look for him, he called out to him and they was like, oh, we hid because we were naked. And, and what did God say? Well, how did you know you was naked? So it reminds me of how the narcissist had deceived us because we all fell short in this area for those who have experienced and survived narcissistic abuse. Okay, we was bamboozled and we never saw it coming because we didn't recognize and understand the things that were happening, but we did know that something just wasn't quite right. So when you went and you started questioning the narcissist, when they finally off, off the character, you're looking confused like what happened to this person that was you know where you had this false connection with because the connection again that you had wasn't with the narcissist the connection you had was with you all along and that was another way that the narcissist was able to plug in but also try to snatch that plug out okay and what they wanted to do was take that power source out because once they were able to do that, that's when they started doing the reasonable doubt and getting you to doubt certain things and trying to guilt trip you because they knew that you were nurturing and you were caring. And, you know, they knew that they were going to rep, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Weaponize that against you because you are sweet, because you are kind, because you are thoughtful, because you do have sympathy, because you do have empathy, but they don't have these attributes. Not because they can't, they don't want to tap into those things because of the trauma that happened to them. So they disconnect themselves from feeling those feelings and they wanted you not to feel those things too. Now, they didn't want you to feel these things and why they were reprogramming you and regrooming you and from the gate is because they wanted to have you be like them, but in a sense, training you and, I, and, and forgive me, you guys, I don't mean no harm, but they wanted to train you in a sense like um, a person will train a dog or an animal. OK, when they they wanted you to to jump to their every command without question. OK, they wanted you to be, which is one of my favorite lines from the movie, even though, you know, we say it jokingly. But at the same time, it's, it's real, real facts. They wanted you to be like Vanessa Bell and coming to America. 
You know, they wanted you to be trained a certain way so that when they ask you what you like, you'll be like, whatever you like. Because they wanted you to be in total agreement with whatever they wanted. And they did not want you to question it. And they did not want you to feel or have some type of thought or feeling behind it. Because that was something that they did not want to deal with. Because they wanted to come in and go out as they please. And did whatever the hell they wanted to. And they wanted you to accept it. And if you did not accept it, that's when they started really wilding out, okay, and acting a plain fool. Because they wanted you to be fearful of them leaving, which they was going to leave anyway. Because a narcissist ain't going to stay loyal to nobody except for to themselves. So... The reason why you never needed closure when you were going through all of this abuse with the narcissist is because you got your closure when the narcissist started showing you who they were and you questioned who they were. Your closure process started then. Because that's when you were closing the door to the relationship. Because you recognize and realize, I don't know what this is, but I know that this is not what I signed up for. And this is not what I know my value and I know I'm worth more than what this person is trying to give to me. And your closure did not start when you walked away. Your closure started when you started awakening and woke up and recognized and realized something about this stink and you smelled it and you was right. Okay. You had blues clues and them clues was coming in fast and furious. Okay. You was like inspector gadget, dun -na 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 -na. inspector gadget, dun -na 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 -na. Ooh inspector gadget, dun -na 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 -na. Dun -dun. so what wind up happening is you started waking up from that love spell that they had put on you. And the narcissist was trying to do everything that they could to try to make sure that you were not on the trail. Okay, y'all remember that game, hot and cold, and you go and you go hide something and then the person go look for it. And then you say, ooh, you hot, you hot. Or, oh, man, you cold, you cold. Oh, you warm, you warm. You know what I mean? So they knew that you was hot. And they knew it was just a matter of time before you was going to put everything together. So they started doing their smear campaign. They was already lining up the next candidate that they were going to, to use, you know, as a way of making you feel like you were the reason why things didn't work out and that wasn't the case. Again, it wasn't designed to work out. And the narcissists knew that. They just wanted to keep you in play. So that when they was ready to do their trick play, that when they came back, you will be willing to participate and continue to play the game. But then they got a rude awakening. Because some of you guys recognize some of these things that they were doing and that you knew that something wasn't right and then what they wind up doing was disappearing okay putting you on a timeout because what they wanted you to do they wanted you to go look for them like where's waldo okay and depending on your situation you found out where the hell Waldo was because Waldo wind up being with another candidate. Okay. Now, when you found out, depending on your situation, some of you guys was like, okay, confirmation. I knew something wasn't right. And you were correct because that was your confirmation and your closure 
when you close that door, you got your confirmation. That was the process. Now, some of you guys went off, told the narcissist how the hell you felt. And then some of y'all was met with the new candidate that you didn't know about because the narcissist was setting that trap in the first place. Because the narcissist wanted you to wild out because the narcissist was sitting over here putting things in their ear and telling them this is why they weren't with you or why they left. Not telling them their part and how you got like that because they programmed your ass that way. Message. And some of you guys... When you saw that, you said absolutely nothing and you just went on, but you was hurt. Because when they did that, you could not understand why this person was so kind in the beginning and then turned around and mistreated you like you was boo-boo on their shoe. They treated you like trash, but then they treated you like treasure in the beginning and then wanted to toss you like you was nothing. So when you were going through all of this nonsense, this is where you recognize and realize too of the, of uh, that you were portrayed. You recognize and realize that the narcissist was playing you this whole time and you never saw it coming. You may have felt certain things, but you didn't understand what it was that you was feeling because it did not line up with what you know when somebody is playing games with you versus when somebody come in and they don't come in in a way to where they're threatening. So when you discover and you found out that you was had, that hurt. And it hurt because you are discovering that not only did somebody play games they play games with your heart. They play games with your mind. They play games with your life. And that it was their whole intentions from day one. And you were bamboozled. So you go through the process of healing. And the healing process is a beast. Because you're not just dealing with what someone had did to you by manipulating you and you have to detox all that. You have to detox the trauma that was caused to you by the narcissist in their childhood wounds. Then you have to go in and heal your inner child. Because you allowed a predator in that you didn't know that was a predator and you wind up hurting that inner child within. And it's a lot to process because it's not just you, you are just processing what happened, but it's a lot that intertwined all at the same time. That you have to unravel each and every layer. Because it's intertwined. And you'll get there. We all go through this process. It's understanding certain things that you need to recognize and understand. And that is you can't allow everybody in your life. And I remember when the narcissist has said that to me, do you just let anybody in your life? And I thought that that was puzzling for somebody to ask me a question like that. But one, but now that I understand why that question was being asked, I get it. 
but you cannot. And I'm going to tell you, just like I used to tell my um, little foster daughter that I had that was with me for a little while. I even told her as a child when she would call people her friends, I was like, that's not your friend. You don't know them. And I told her just because somebody is friendly doesn't mean they're your friend. Now, somebody going to get set free from the words that I just said. Just because somebody is friendly does not mean that they are your friend. So when you are deciding after your healing, if you're going to decide to deal with people or even whatever the situation may be, family members, co-workers, whatever, you have to learn how to have your boundaries. And your strongest word that you're going to ever keep you, that you need, and continuously say it is no. No means no. No, I'm not going to do that. No, thank you. Because if you allow a narcissist to have an inch, baby, they're going to try to take a mile and drag you right with them. Do not allow yourself to be fooled. Now, this was a learning lesson, a tough and a hard one at that. But this doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you better and it makes you wiser and it has given you some wisdom that you are able to tap into and it's giving you an awakening that even the narcissist don't have that gift. You do. This key, this awakening has given you some tools that is going to help you not only expand but it's going to help you to recognize and know how to move in your personal life. Now, the narcissist, they're going to try to hoover you, but it ain't going to do the narcissist no good because once you recognize and realize who they are, Ain't no coming back for the narcissist on that. That's just a waste of damn time. But they're going to waste their time anyway. And they'll have people watch you, listening, report back to them and things of that nature. But the narcissist will never be able to understand and figure you out no matter how much they try to watch you. No matter how many times they try to get somebody to hire, to look, to to ask questions. Because once you go through this whole experience, you're going to shut all that down. And whatever God wants to reveal will be revealed. But what God don't want to be revealed won't be. I don't care what kind of spiritual uh, dark forces that they try to go to and try to get information. Some stuff God is just going to shut down. Click, click. You ain't going to know this. Access is denied. So you got your closure when the narcissist removed their mask. But you got your confirmation when you left. When you discarded the narcissist or the narcissist discarded you, but you got your confirmation and it was a hard pill to swallow. But nonetheless, you rose high above it like a butterfly. And look at you, shining brighter, having more joy and more fun because you recognize and you realize the love of God that was on you 
and how much God loved you and brought you out and protected you. And your ladder is better than the former. You better. And you better than a narcissist. Because you found out how the narcissist was playing this game all this time. Now the narcissist is sitting over there looking like an asshole. Excuse my language. Because at the end of the day, when they were sitting over here trying to destroy you and your purpose and things of that nature, and when they couldn't get what they wanted, they tried to leave you in a trauma bond. They tried to leave you mentally unstable, emotionally ruled, okay? They wanted you to be spiteful and hateful like them, and it backfired on them. And it's supposed to. Now, the narcissist is going to reap every bit of what they have sown. So please do not take it upon yourself to, to get the revenge. Please let go and let God, because God is going to do a better job than you would. But the narcissist reaps everything because that narcissist already has trauma. But now they got to live with the fact that what they did to you, they got to live with that. Now, I know some people say, but the narcissist don't care. And the narcissist does care. They care about that they wasn't able to get their supply. And they got to live with that every single day. And somebody told the narcissist that they should have just left you alone. But the narcissist is hard-headed and wanted to keep on keeping on. And every time the narcissist kept coming, what you do? Slam the door, access denied, no thank you, kick rocks, keep it moving, no. So now you going toe to toe with the narcissist, but you ain't fighting on the narcissist uh, ground. Because at the end of the day, when the narcissist came for you, he came for your God that's in you. And... Last time I checked and read my Bible, God ain't never lost no fight. Not one. And he ain't going to lose now. And the narcissist will be exposed for what they did to you. Oh, it's coming. And every day that the narcissists get up, the narcissist is, is on their mind. Is, is today the day where I'm going to get exposed? Because somebody is going to expose that narcissist. It ain't that you just know things. It's not just that. The narcissist will be exposed. Somebody is going to expose that narcissist. And the narcissist ain't going to not know when it happened and when it occurred. I don't give a damn how many sneaky devices that they got. It's just a matter of time. And time is ticking. So you never needed closure from the narcissist. You just needed confirmation. I'll see you guys in the next video.